Hello Octoprint fans! It's Former Lurker again. This is the first video in a series showing off some of the new features in the next version of Octolapse. Some of you may have seen a previous vid video that I released that showed a lot of the new features, but things have changed a lot since then, and uh, I tried to make a video showing all the changes and all the improvements and all the new features, and it really just got out of hand. It was too long and I was having trouble keeping on track. So I've decided to break it up into components. And today's video is all about webcam settings. So some of you may have seen my post on Patreon a while back showing off a new camera setting screen that I created. And I was actually pretty happy with how that control turned out. But one of the downsides was that it only supported features that were available on my camera, which is a Logitech C920. And since then, a lot of people have been posting uh, about the Raspberry Pi camera and their inability to get the custom image preferences working through Octolapse or through MJPEG Streamer's control page, for that matter. No one could get them working. And at the time when I, I wrote Octolapse, or basically up until recently, I didn't have access to a Pi cam. But I do now, thanks to my supporters on Patreon. And after a lot of struggling, I finally figured out how to get custom image preferences working for the Pi Cam by using the official Raspberry Pi Cam driver. So let me first show you how I was able to do that. Hopefully, it, it helps some people. So the first thing to do is to navigate to the ETC folder and edit the modules file. Okay, let me take care of that. Put the password in here. All right, now you'll see that I've basically added one line right here, and that is the Raspberry Pi camera driver. And this was already installed on my system. And I've checked with a couple other users who've also tried this, and it was installed on theirs as well. So I believe that this will work without having to install anything. And if I hear otherwise, I will create a video or a guide on how to install this driver. Um, once you've added this line, you want to save, control O, and exit, control X. Now there's also some changes we have to make to our octopi.txt file. Oops. Oh, wait a minute, I just got a message. So we're going to go to boot, and we're going to edit that. All right, so now uh, the first change is right here. The camera type, most of you probably have RasPi entered in here. Uh, you want to change that to USB. Now in my testing, auto also worked, but there's no reason not to set it to USB and uh, better safe than sorry in case it automatically detects the old driver, I guess. And then you're going to want to uncomment this line if it's commented and uh, set the resolution. I set mine to 1080p, 1920 by 1080, and I set a frame rate of 10 frames per second. And you don't have to do this, but just to be clean, I commented out the Raspberry Pi camera options right here. Uh, might as well have them commented out so it's obvious that it's not being used. Uh, once again, Control O to save, Control X. You can also save with Control X, but I prefer doing it one after another. And then you got to reboot. Now I'm not going to reboot mine because I've already got the driver loaded. So let's switch over here to the control file. And you can see this is MJPEG streamers control.htm file. And this now works. And if I refresh it here, you'll see that there are two errors about unknown control types, but that doesn't seem to hurt anything. You just don't have access to those controls. Now if you look through these controls, they're they're kind of clunky. Um, there's no stream here for you to see the settings applied. You could open another stream window, but it's a lot of steps. And the other problem is when you reboot, all of these settings seem to go away, which is most unfortunate. So this isn't exactly a great place to update your settings. And if you move your camera around, you've got to change everything else. You've got to change for the lighting. It's just kind of a pain. So. I decided that 
since um, you know after I got the image preferences working and I got the new page for the Logitech 920 I was a little bit sad that not all the image controls that are available on that uh, uh, the controls.htm file weren't available in Octolabs and I know how popular the Raspberry Pi camera module is uh, and I'd done a lot of major settings changes and I didn't want to have to do it again so I went ahead and made the Raspberry Pi camera work too and after a lot of fiddling I think things are working pretty well uh, in fact as long as MJPEG streamer reports that the uh, camera has controls and tells me what they are my method should work for any USB camera at least as long as MJPEG streamer likes it now the page doesn't always look great but the controls seem to work at least with the cameras that I tested uh, let me go ahead and show you what that file looks like so I'm gonna go to input.json and you see here I get some JSON and there are labels and there are controls and it tells me what type they are this is a, a numeric control a slider in my case uh, it tells you what the min and max values are how much you can increment what the default is even though this is highly unreliable uh, what the current value is and and some other information And you see there's a lot of controls here e even little menus like what options are available if it's a drop-down box and I thought well I can use this to die to uh, dynamically generate a control page and that's exactly what I did uh, so let's go back into Octoprint and look at these custom cameras now you're seeing right here is a image from my Logitech 920 uh, let's look at the Raspberry Pi camera now as long as your camera is working okay you should have the option to enable custom image preferences. I've actually already got it enabled. Let's disable it and talk about what happens. So initially when you create a camera this is going to be disabled. And when I click this checkbox, Octolaps uh, tries to query your camera to see what server it's running on and if it detects MJPEG streamer it will try to load the input.json file and figure out what controls are available and then it'll dynamically create settings page based on what's there and it'll combine those with any saved settings that you've already detected and saved so let's click this you can see it did some detecting and it came back and this is a image in front of my Raspberry Pi camera um, so that's a preview window and let me just click that I'll explain that later uh, so this is the control page as it would exist in the defaults and it looks a lot like the MJPEG streamer page. Matter of fact, I'm going to load this up on my other window and I'll show you side by side. You can see, I mean, right down to the labels and the order, it basically just does a very similar thing. Uh, instead of numeric controls, you know, I've got these nice little sliders here and you can see how they work. If I move this, it starts applying them. Uh, it's rate limited. It'll only send four changes a second. So if you drag it really fast, you'll notice it's not updating too quickly. But that's you know basically to save bandwidth and to keep your server going. Um, all these work. You know, there's a few strange things about this, which which I'll get into here in a second. Uh, the first thing you might notice is this is a lot of irritating scrolling. And if you scroll down, you can't see the stream, and then you got to scroll back up. I did add this button and I'll explain later why I didn't just have it set to two columns all the time but to kind of reduce the amount of scrolling that's necessary uh, but really this is mostly just to get this working if you want to make a couple changes while you're in here that's fine uh, but if you go ahead and save that and you select your camera right here in this drop down there is this little pin button edit my image preferences and that opens a special screen it's optimized for editing your set your settings you can see it keeps the stream up here uh, it dynamically resizes it to fit in this window and make sure that you have a little space down here to to get your controls and it really makes it a lot more pleasurable to edit your settings you know you can drag them around you can see everything that's happening um, so that's really nice now there's there's some other catches here like uh, for example I noticed that 
this setting. Oh, whoa, let's rotate. That's not what I intended. Um, yeah, they're even hard to find. They're not exactly lined up. Oh, here we go. Red balance. See, that doesn't seem to do anything. Doesn't seem to change anything. Well, it took me a while to realize that this white balance auto and preset drop down here has to be set to manual. And then these controls will work. And they're actually nowhere near the same control. It's like on the opposite side. If it was in single column mode, it would be way at the bottom. And actually, this one was maybe the easiest one to figure out. There's other crazy um, interdependencies when you look at the white balance and the ISO sensitivity. Uh, the color effects are a really nasty one. For example, if I pick aqua, uh, that looks aqua, right? I switch to art freeze. I switch back to aqua. That looks great. Now, if I turn this, you see how it changes the color? Well, let's leave it on pink. Now, it's a little hard to get in there. And then we'll change it off of that setting and back to aqua. See how it's blue now? It ignored this color setting that we set here, even though it does change the color. And what happens is the order that these uh, controls are applied to the camera matters. So that's something I really can't fix dynamically, unfortunately. Uh, because of that, I decided to try to add custom pages when I can figure out what kind of cam your, camera you're using. And the way I figure it out is I look at that json.page, and I look at all the controls, and I look at all the settings, and I compare them uh, to a list of known cameras and try to find a match. Uh, it's possible that I won't be able to detect all cameras accurately that way, but I think it'll get the vast majority of them, and it seems to work for the two that I have now. So I'm going to click this check for custom page, because I do have a custom setting page that I created just for this camera, and you see it found the webcam, and I need to put a message in here, but you'll notice that it kind of grouped everything. Um, those pesky white balance controls are now grouped together and if I have it set uh, any, to anything other than manual it won't let me adjust the red and blue balance because they wouldn't do anything anyway. So if I set it to whoops, manual now they unlock and you can see the values uh, it's really nice. I'm, I'm just really happy with the way that these turned out. Actually it doesn't look like the red balance is working. That could be a glitch. I need to debug this page a bit. Um, but the exposure mode over here is probably the most complicated. Um, you see I can edit the, I can't edit the exposure time right now. That's obviously because this is an auto mode. So let's turn it to manual. Now I can edit the exposure unless I set a scene. Now this setting wouldn't do anything. If I go back to the defaults page and I look for the exposure time and change it, it's pretty mysterious why this is set to manual mode and this exposure time isn't doing anything. So that really threw me a loop. And actually some of these other ones are even more crazy with uh, how they interact. So here you can always tell um, you can always tell that they're disabled and they don't work. And you may not know why unless you read the help that I've added to every control. Um, that's a new feature that I'm going to I'm going to show off here uh, in another video, but it turns out this scene mode needs to be set to none for manual exposure to work. So if I set it to sports, I can actually adjust the dynamic frame rate and the bias with scene mode on, uh, or if auto exposure is on and scene mode is off, you also can adjust the bias but not if scene mode is off and manual mode is selected. And it gives you some feedback. It um, kind of just helps you figure out what's going on. And if you really goof something bad, oh my god, I got an orange or a pink screen, I don't know how to fix it, there's this lovely defaults button. Now, let me click it here because it's very satisfying. All right, it just went right back. So the defaults are actually, as you can tell, pretty ugly for this camera, unfortunately. Um, my camera's upside down, but you can see how grainy that looks. Well, it turns out this default video bitrate setting is awful. Crank that up and it just gets instantly clear. It's a little bit out of focus, but that's because this image is right up next to the camera. Uh, so that makes makes things just 
just so much nicer. It's just easier to figure things out, and I spend all the time pulling my hair out, figuring out how these controls work, so that hopefully you don't have to. So let me save this. And for now, I'm going to switch to my 920. I believe I have to start this stream, if you bear with me for just one second. I had to shut that stream down when I was doing some testing. Okay, it should be back up. Let me go in here. And you can see that this right now, uh, this is the dynamically generated page. If I click custom, I get the custom page. It has a lot of the same features. If I'm not in manual mode, I can't adjust the exposure. Um, if I'm on one of the auto modes, the exposure setting doesn't do anything. Uh, same with focus. I can adjust the focus. I can apply the defaults. Don't know why the zoom is set in the middle. Just take that down. And that makes it really nice. And I also, if I mess up my image and I knew that I liked the way it was set, I can hit cancel right here. Cancel. Go back in. It has canceled those changes. So that's another way to to save yourself if you make a bunch of mistakes. Now, if you bear with me one second, I'm going to move this clock out of the way. I'm going to set first my stabilization to be centered. Go right here in, in just one second. I'll be right back. I like to debug with that clock sitting there so that I can see uh, time changing. So let me show you this one other great feature. This was recommended uh, a while back on GitHub and I liked it so much I just decided to go ahead and add it. Um, this works as long as your stabilization is fixed. It doesn't work for some of the new ones but it'll give you a message if it can't do it. And You click stabilize. It does give you a warning uh, so you can remove clocks or prints that might be sitting there that you forgot about. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. This actually is not going to work because this is not the live uh, instance. Let me go ahead and pull that up. I have to sign in. Second. There we go. Let's go to Octolapse, and you'll probably notice things look a little bit different here. I uh, don't have Themify on, and I haven't updated this version. That's This is actually running on my printer, uh, but the custom image preferences should still work. That is the wrong camera stream. Wow. So, there are a lot of things that need to be changed here. All right, here we go. So, stabilize extruder at long last. Let me click it. Oh, so it's got a lot of safety features. Let me cancel and connect. It's important to be connected to your printer before you try to send commands to it. Oh, that's the wrong camera. Go to my camera. All right. Now, hopefully this works. Stabilize extruder. Look at that. So first it homes, then it moves the bed to the center. Now you can't really see the extruder, it's just up too high, but the extruder would be in the right place too. So this makes it a lot easier to adjust your focus. Now, now that we have that out of the way, that and you can see how much nicer this looks. I mean, it really does look a lot nicer, doesn't it? You have seen all of the new camera features that I can remember, except maybe this shows when your camera's disabled. Um, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. Uh, give me some comments. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is there something you'd like to see added? Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. And for the time being, Former Lurker out. You guys have a great day.